Let's have a sesh on shareholders. So a shareholder is anyone that has a share in a company. A company could be a private limited company or a public limited company. But regardless of which of those it is, the same key features exist. They can vote at the AGM, at the annual general meeting. They have limited liability, which means the amount they invested into the company is the maximum they can make in losses. And if the company offers dividends, they will get access to those dividends being the cut of the profits. Now, why become a shareholder? Reason number one, capital gain. You want to buy the share with hope that the value of that share increases, so you have made capital gain. Number two, earn dividends. You might want to get that cut of the profits. Three, if you want to have control, you might want to be a majority shareholder in a company, and therefore you'll want to acquire more shares and have shares above that 50% threshold. Four, wider beliefs. You might be investing in a company for ethical reasons or for environmental reasons. Now let's look at the influences on share prices. So when we're thinking about influences on a share price, we need to split a company into a private limited company and a public limited company. A private limited company, well, the price of the share will be solely defined by the agreement between the owner of the share and the person that's buying that share being the investor. And what they agree, if they agree two pound a share, that's the price of the share. But that's different to a public limited company because a public limited company is on the stock exchange. So we'll have various influences that affect its share price. But naturally, it will be derived by supply and demand. So when we're talking about supply and demand, that is what's going to influence the price on the stock exchange. Putting it simply, on the supply side, if there is an increase in supply of shares, it could be that there has been a sell-off of shares, so there is more supply of those shares, it will lead to the price of shares falling. And naturally, the reverse would happen. If there are less shares, so there is less supply, they're more scarce, so if they're more scarce, it will increase the price of them, it will inflate the price of those shares. On the demand side, it's much more simple. So if the demand of a share falls, so demand for that share falls, it will lead to the price of the share falling. And if demand for the share increases, then price for the share will naturally increase. Now let's look at some of those influences. So number one is the business performance, the company's performance. It could be their performance based on some reports or future expectations. So if they are positive, well, then that will increase the demand for that share and therefore the price will go up. But if there is a negative feeling around the business performance, it will mean that a sell-off happens. So there might be sales of those shares. If there's sales of those particular shares for that company, there's more supply of those shares. If there's more supply of those shares, the price of the shares will have to reduce. Number two is interest rates. So interest rates, well, if interest rates go up, then if you are an investor, it may be now there's more incentive for you to pick up your cash and put it into something that earns interest because interest rates are higher, they're more attractive now. So if you are currently in equities, in shares, then it might mean that naturally you will look to sell those shares. If you sell those shares, it means the supply of shares increases. And if the supply of shares increases, the price will fall and the other way around. So if interest rates go down, as they have tended to historically for a long time now, then you will see interest rates are lower, less attractive to put cash in the bank. If it's less attractive to put cash in the bank, you will look elsewhere. It might be you would want to invest into equities, into shares. So therefore, demand for shares increases, price of shares increase. If you really want to flex it in an exam, you might want to bring in more contemporary stuff that's happened, which is QE, quantitative easing. And if quantit with quantitative easing, essentially what it is, is that when we've had the economy struggling, as we have now and as we had before in 2008, you've seen central banks from many of the major developed economies in the world, such as the Fed in the US or the Bank of England in the UK or the ECB in the EU, well, they have done quantitative easing for a lot of cash. And essentially, they will electronically print cash. They electronically print cash and then they immediately will go and buy government primarily, but also corporate bonds. And if they do that, they have increased the demand for bonds, increased the 
price of bonds, which means the yield of bonds will reduce. And if the yield of bonds reduces, well, that makes it less attractive for investors to be in bonds. And if they don't want to be in bonds, which is clearly a form of debt, they'll look to the opposite of debt. And the opposite of debt is equities, which is one of the reasons that has fueled the power in the markets over the last decade. Um, so that would lead to more QE, would lead to the price of shares increasing. Now, the next one is the economy. If the economy is performing well, then it tends to lead to a demand in a demand increase for shares and prices of shares increasing because if the economy is performing well, consumers may have better incomes, they look to spend in service industries and that will lead to this increase. And naturally the other way around, so if the economy looks to be performing badly, then it might be a sell-off in shares. A sell-off in shares means supply goes up, supply goes up, that means the price of shares may fall. The next one is your rival's performance. So you may be an industry, let's say a duopoly, where it's just two of you in the market, your rival's performance is going to massively affect your share price. If your rival is doing very well, it may lead to a sell-off in your shares, which would lead to supply increasing and prices falling. But if your rival is performing badly, maybe they release a product and it's, it's an absolute flop, it's a no-go. Well, then that might lead to your business performance doing well, which leads to demand for your shares increasing and therefore prices for your shares increasing. Obviously, things we've seen over the last 10 years, particularly in the US, we've seen share buybacks. So share buybacks is essentially, we've seen with the, um, with the DT administration in the US, the Cairo president, we've seen that massive, massive, massive tax cuts the idea of them is really just to try and pump up investment, but really what's happened is many CEOs, their share prices are tagged, they're, sorry, their bonuses are tagged to the share prices. So what's happened, they thought, well, we're gonna buy back our shares, they've bought back their shares, and that's led to an increase in demand for shares, an increase in price of shares, and if CEOs' uh, end of year bonuses are tied to the share price, well, clearly they do well too. Naughty stuff. Uh, number six um, is takeovers and mergers. What the general consensus is of those takeovers and mergers, or news of them, or expectation of them. So if the markets believe that a takeover or merger, it looks like it's gonna be a good one, then you might see an increase in demand and an increase in price in those shares, or one of those shares, whichever one the consensus is that it's gonna help. But on the other side, if um, there's a takeover and merger consensus and the market doesn't feel like it's a great idea, it may lead to a sell-off, therefore increasing supply and reducing price. Now let's look at the last thing, which is the significance of changes. So the last thing to look at is the significance of these changes in share prices. Well, if you're using your share prices fall below the price you paid for them, clearly you have lost money. And if share prices go above the price you paid for them, clearly you have made money. But if you are a long-term investor, then ultimately all of this is meaningless in the short term because you are looking for that long-term trend to see your share prices increase and therefore make capital gain and maybe dividends alongside that. But it's worth pointing out that with the markets, particularly stock markets, it is inevitable there will be volatility. And what I mean by that is that they will go up and they will go down, okay? But you are looking for trends. The last thing to think about with a public limited company is market capitalization, because clearly that will change if the share price changes. So just to remind you, market cap formula, number of shares times by the current market price, and that gives you the market cap. So Clearly this is constant in this case, but the current market price, the current market price, well, if that changes, that clearly will change the market capitalization of that public limited company. Last thing to think about is on the other side, number of shares that could change if you do some sort of equity issue, so new share issues, which sometimes will lead to the value of the share price falling. Anyway, I hope that helps. I'll see you at the next session.